Hey guys, Marlon here, and this is Lean On Me. I don't wanna play The rules unfair and my back about to break I don't wanna play when this weight on my shoulders is yours to take But still they wanna crucify me And pour dirt on my name And there's a war out here for me But you don't wanna brave Lean on me, lean on me, I'm here for your sake, I'll bite my tongue, dress how you like, and do what you say. I don't want to play. War outside and my front line's about to break I don't want to play Breaking all our rules, I'm a prisoner of war again Cause if you're looking for a problem, you can find it in the one that you love and I keep my enemies at bay to give me time to figure out how to love them Cause with all your money and with all your pride You got an issue with committing to nice If you look inside and delete your spite You'll be the reason I can talk through a smile But still they wanna crucify me, baby And pour dirt on my name When there's a war out here for me But you don't wanna pray Lean on me, babe. This episode is brought to you by Rick's Eyewear. Eyewear that inspires confidence. If you would like to buy some premium eyewear, sunglasses, blue light frames, prescription, head online now, rickseyewear.com.au and check it out. Caps has been Australia's home of headwear since 2012. From snapback to fitted, curved peak to flat peak, our hats will fit anyone and everyone. Since then, we've grown and evolved into the leaders of US sports apparel in Australia. Head online at caps.com.au and check it out. Righto, let's get into the show. Well, today, joined by Football Rules here with the last name, but today we're not talking about football, we're all talking about the music industry. Marlon Motlop in the building. Mate, welcome to the uh, Oz American Aces platform. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Mate, it's good to see your face. I think the last time we caught up, you were uh, having 30 and kicking two down at Pure Thunder. <laughs> oh, I don't know about it. I think I was uh, reassessing my life down at, <laughs> down at Mandurah at that stage, but yeah, it's been a while. It has been, mate. It's good to see your face. We're going to talk about the music industry because you're dominating and you're only, you've only been short-lived. It's, uh, it's quite exciting. It's something that I'm quite intrigued, actually, to learn a little bit more about the space. And I've been listening to all your music, and I love acoustic vibes and all the rest of it. But um, let's start with with your journey growing up, though. Let's go back to go forward. Give us a little bit of background on your football career and also your music career at the start, because I know you, you you started young for both of them. Yeah, um, I guess originally from Darwin in the Northern Territory, um, I guess, yeah, my parents are both from Darwin. Mum, mum grew up in Perth for a little bit, but... Um, yeah, essentially, right, they grew me up in Darwin, and right from an early age, I just wanted to play AFL footy. Um, it, it was crazy that all my uncles were either footballers or football coaches. So, um, and on the other side, on my on my mum's side, they were they were either teachers or principals. So, I wasn't going to be a teacher or a principal. So, <laughs> <laughs> I went down the footy path, and um, yeah, I just loved growing up playing footy with with my brothers and my cousins as well. And um, you know, I was lucky enough to develop in the right way, but I guess. You know, right from an early age, as as long as I've been playing footy and um, you know kicking a ball around, I'd been and had a, I'd had a guitar in my hand as well. Um, 
dad was a he, he was a student of music, so he went to university and kind of everything he, he learned of music, he tried to bring home and, and teach us kids. And um, back then, I hated learning guitar. Like I, I fucking hated it. Like really, I'd, I'd, I'd sit in the room and I just want to get out and kick the footy. Um, but then I grew into it and um, started to, you know, listen to um, stuff like Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, and um, really, really started to feel the music and, um, you know, find find what I liked about playing guitar. And um, and then kind of footy took over from there uh, for a fair bit, and I was drafted to Port Adelaide Footy Club at uh, the end of 2007, about a month out of high school, and um, yeah, just probably put everything into into trying to be um you know an AFL footballer and um that was that was a, a an interesting journey as well you know I spent you know four years on on a list at Port Adelaide and um I learned a hell of a lot um but it, you know to be brutally honest my body just wasn't up to the rigors of AFL footy I just kept breaking down so um yeah it was it was an interesting journey but I learned a lot out of it you went pick 28 was it 28, yeah. 28, yeah. So early pick, um, and I've seen you in full flight, superstar. What what happened with the body? Why didn't it cope? Um, I think, you know, for a lot of a lot of kids growing up in Darwin, like we'd we'd play footy in the wet season, and then in the dry season, we'd go and play rugby or touch footy. Um, and so I did that for the majority of my childhood. But then when I started to get to 17, 18, um, We'd be playing footy in the wet season, and then I started to get into um, in North Adelaide. Used to um, fly me down to play footy in the school holidays and stuff, and I was playing rugby as well. And then I think over the course of you know from from sixteen through to probably nineteen twenty, I don't think I ever stopped. And um, in Darwin, we didn't have pre seasons as well, so you just go from rugby to go to footy, and then go to the next sport. And I think once I got to Port Adelaide, I think. The first year and a half, my body kind of coped all right. Um, but then I think it was just a, a, a build-up of probably the last three or four years of just um, wear and tear. And um, I started to suffer a lot of overuse injuries like stress fractures and uh, in my back and in my feet and um, you know osteitis pubis as well. So, um, And then, yeah, um, I just couldn't get on the track. And when I got on the track, I was shit out because I hadn't kicked the footy for a while. So, yeah. yeah. It's it, there's some of the worst injuries you can. I know um, a good mate of mine, Viv Mitchy, had a lot of feet issues. We played together actually yep. down at Peel, and I used to just remember listening to the you know the rehab programs, and some of them were days like you know just beach walks, you know yeah, like just yep. some real boring shit. And yep. it must have been tough those four years, especially as a, a an early draft pick, a you know highly talented athlete. Like yeah. th- did that make you? Like, did you start playing more music in those days to kind of get your head away from footy? Yeah, I did. Um, I I just picked up the guitar when I was um, when I couldn't walk, or you know, I think I had probably three or four surgeries in three years, and wow. um, yeah, I, I just put put a lot of time into music, and um, yeah, the rehab programs were oh, they used <laughs> to do my, like that. I used to put um, weights in a bag and just walk for two hours <laughs> just to get like um, strength in my feet, and I'd be I'd be there like. All right, I'd go through a, I'd go through a Kendrick album like twice. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like I, I couldn't understand, but I, 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 that was one thing that I learnt um, through that process was um, just to try and prepare really well and um, work really hard in rehab. And I think I think from those years, once I started to get my body right in footy, um, things started to click on field, and I knew how to prepare during the week, and um, I knew how to I knew how to get my body right and um, you know, from from about probably twenty twenty two onwards, um, I started to play some really good footy, and I was happy with who I was on a footy field. Yeah. Why did? Do you think you were stiff with just four years? Because traditionally, if you're an early pick, they give you or any pick, they generally look at you if it's two to three, generally three, because it's enough of a sample size. Yeah. I've seen you play, and you're very good. Do you think you're a bit stiff not to get a you know a few more years? Um, not not so much. I think the club were doing with doing what they could at the time with what they had and Port Adelaide were like we were we were really struggling back then like we were broke um players wanted to leave um Adelaide media were all over us and um yeah at the time we it was a weird transition where we had these greats at our footy club that were kind of on their way out um and they were trying to rebuild the club as well and bring in a new talent um and I I I felt like I was kind of just caught in between all of that um and then, you know, when you're not producing on the footy field, you know, AFL's a cutthroat industry. So, um, yeah, I look back and just think, you know, the club did 
the best that they could with what they had and we were seriously under-resourced. Um, and so, yeah, I just look back and just try and take out, you know, the positive learnings that I had from that experience. Um, and I think it's not so much I learned what to do. A lot of the time I learned what not to do by observing a lot of things around me. Um, and that's, yeah, as I said, you know, that's probably prepped me for probably then from the ages of 22 through to, through to now, I think, in terms of footy. Spot on. Let's go back to the music, um, I guess, to your, your work early days. How old were you when you picked up a guitar and, and started singing as well? Um, I reckon <clears throat> my earliest memory of getting a guitar, it was a, a little Valencia um, nylon string from dad. And I can remember one time, I'd, once I found a Michael Jackson CD, like I just used to have that on repeat in my room. Um, and all us Motlop kids, we were obsessed with Michael Jackson. Like you'd go to a family barbecue and Stephen would be like doing Michael Jackson. He'd be battling Daniel in, in the backyard. And, um, <laughs> you know, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon is the oldest of us, uh, all us kids, but he's the most fanatical Michael Jackson fan you'll ever meet or see in the world. Um, and so, yeah, we were all obsessed with him, but I can remember putting on um, Michael Jackson's like history album or greatest hits and there was a song called Heal the World and I was like, I was probably about five or six or seven, I reckon, and I dragged Dad in the room and I, I, had, I had no idea how to play. And I turned the song on, it was about a six minute song and I just played a solo for six minutes and Dad would have been sitting there like, fuck, kid, you got a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I just soloed this thing, but that's probably one of my earliest memories, I reckon. And then, um, yeah, just playing with my brothers and my sister, um, my brother and sister um, at home as well. Um, they were heavily into um into music and my brother played the guitar as well so yeah i've heard i've heard your brother he's not bad as well there's a few like do all the motlops know how to dance and sing there's something in the blood there no i don't know we think we do but we're probably shit ass if you <laughs> if you look back at the tape there yeah, do a monday review and look at look at us on the dance floor probably, oh i'm sure you, know, you got the moves now I, I think singing is one of the greatest talents in the world i think everyone that can't sing would love to be able to sing it's one of those things that when you do you know, sit down with the guitar and start singing. Everyone stops talking and listens. And mm. I've heard your music and I've heard what you can do. It's um, it's really cool and well done. How hard has it been to build yourself up to this point um, over the journey? Is there heaps of practice and skills that go into this or is it just a natural talent thing? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get funny with that um, term natural talent. You know, I think there's an aspect of it. Um, but I can remember trying to sing and sounding like, you know, a, a, a dying horse. Like, <laughs> I can remember being, being shit house at it. Um, so I just kept trying and kept um, practicing. And um, yeah, I got to a point where I'd, I'd sing, I'd be singing at home and I'd, I'd started to feel um, like I could um, identify a sound in myself, um, a bit like a, a character within yourself. And so I just kept um, trying to hone in on that and focus in on that and, um, yeah, started to YouTube, you know, singing exercises and lessons and um, I'd be doing that every day. So if I look back probably on the last eight to 10 years, I would, I would have been on YouTube probably every day. Oh, wow. Just listening to, um, trying to emulate singers or, um, yeah, just listen, looking at um, singing exercises or techniques as well. And um, over probably the last two or three years, I've, I've got a vocal coach now and um, now that I'm performing quite regularly as well and um, it's a delicate muscle as well, um, you know, your vocal cords as well. So you got to look after them um, and treat them right. Um, and it's essentially like, you know, just playing playing footy and looking after your body. You know, you got to prep, you got to warm up, you got to warm down, um, you got to look after it, hydrate, and then um, you know, prepare for the next for the next game or for the next performance. So that's really interesting. So because I don't know anything about this, so you, you can't just. I mean, you could you could just bang it out if you're at someone's house and they say, "Can you sing?" But it's you're better off. At a gig, so you, how long would you take warming up? Um, yeah, it would start probably 30, 40 minutes prior. And you got um, exercises as well yeah, to do that? Yeah, you just got little exercises that you do to to warm up and just activate um, activate your, your vocal cords. And a lot of it is, for me, you, you find um, what works for you. Um, and for me, it's more so just activating your body and your diaphragm and um, and kind of relaxing as well, you know. It's a, it's a culmination of a lot of things. Um, and some days you might warm up for – for an hour and yeah. um, still struggle, you know. Um, and some days you might warm up for 10 minutes and you might be bang on, ready to go. So um, 
it's never it's never the same. Um, it's always it's always moving as well, and I think that's probably the fun bit about it. And um, that's where you just you click into footy mode, and um, you just remember all those days where you got a little spot in your hammy where you got to iron it out. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it's the same thing with 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 your with your vocal vocal cords. You know, you got to iron out a lot of a lot of little little kinks. What about like you know, we've all had those games where we're warming up and we're just going shit out. Like I know there's days where I'm kicking the ball at the side of my foot, and you know the game's starting soon. A bit like a gig, you got the gig starts in thirty minutes and you're warming up and you're feeling your voice just not warm up. Have you had anything like that before? Yeah, yep, all the time actually. Um, really. And yeah, I know that's where the the practice just comes in. Like you, you get so hell bent on just trying to sound perfect. Um, and that's the beauty of you know performing with you know with with other artists as well. You know, and um, you know we've got, as I mentioned before, we've got a, a guy Grayson Rodimer who's a lecturer at Adelaide University, and um, he's a he's a he's a reference for me. You know, if I'm warming up and I'm like far out, I sound shit out here. I'll just go to him and start playing around with him and just relax into it and he'll be going, yeah, that sounds good or, um, you know, try these sirens and try this um, technique and um, we'll bounce off each other and a lot of the time it's just you and a critic going, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not there. But um, you, put your, you put your trust in, in the prep before that, you know. Like everything, isn't it? Yeah. That's funny, man. Jeez, it's a, it'd be a daunting. Oh, that, that, let's go to that. Look, there's a gig. There's how many? What's the biggest crowd you've played in front of? Um, I think forty thousand at wow. Adelaide Oval. Yeah. <laughs> then, Do you get nervous as for that? I mean, that's probably the beautiful thing about footy. You've you've seen these crowds before. It's nothing new. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there'd be a, the, the little little fella on the shoulder be getting in your yeah, head there yeah. before the gig, wouldn't he? Well, particularly with a footy footy event, like I'm walking in and you know the little the little critic on my shoulders going. You're a footballer, mate. You're not a singer. What are you doing? Everyone's looking at you like, what are you doing? And then you just gotta, you just gotta fight him and um, and just tell yourself like, this is what you want to do. You know, I think I get um, I get a real kick out of knowing that I'm here taking the risk and um, I'm, I'm I've put in the work and I've prepared really well. And at the end of the day, I, when I'm performing and singing, I love doing it. Like I love, I love the the reaction from people. Um, I love the the two way conversation that you get from, you know, an audience and 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 that you give uh, to an audience and and get back from them as well. And um, it's just a real buzz as well. And I, I constantly, as footballers, we compare everything to football. If you've been in the game, you know, a long time, um, and you'd know that yourself. So I compare everything like performing to to football. But once you get on the stage, when you're singing, a lot of it is. The responsibility's on you when you're singing a verse or a chorus, you know. So if I stuff up, then it's on me, and I love that responsibility about it. Whereas on a footy field, you can kind of hide if you're having a shit day. Or, <laughs> yeah, on the wing you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just pop back to a back pocket and yeah. and stat up and get yourself into the game. Yeah, yeah. That, no, it's it's a, it's it's so cool, man. Let's go back to the um the warm ups. Can you give me like one right now? Just one of many that you do. Yeah, um, it's, it's weird. Like if you're warming <laughs> no, up in front of people, but um, for me, like it's people will usually start from the bottom end, like a low register and come high, but I like to start high and come down. So for me, what works personally is if I've got an exercise where I'll go, sing, like a vocal siren. So it just kind of irons out the little kinks and through that, um, through that you find out where you've got to iron out a few spots. Little tune up. Yeah, mate. This is so. This is fascinating for me. Yeah, I'm loving it. And then, I guess so. If we'll get, again, so football on your journey. So you went from um, NT Port Adelaide, and then was it to Perth? Is that when you went to Peel? Uh, yeah, yeah. I went to Swan Districts for a year. And oh, then, Swanies first. That's um, right. Yeah, the Cam Shepherd. Um, yep, the yeah. great man. Shout out, yeah, yeah. coach. Yeah, shout out to Cam Shepherd. I might have your own boot there. The banana. Just Google that. There, <laughs> Chef. He loves that one. <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, I, I went. He he took me from Swans um, to Peel Thunder when he when he coached. So yeah, they were tough days when we were down there, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. we had because we were together when Peel weren't aligned to Freo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And obviously, we had some success. I reckon when you left. Yeah. Um, but when me and you were playing together, I remember driving down there and just we were getting belted like yeah. eighty points, weren't we? Yeah, <laughs> we'd, yeah. we'd be oh, sitting huh? in those ices after the game, like, <laughs> ah, okay, where do we start? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I look back at that and I was like, I'd, it was enjoyable. Like I learned a lot of it, a lot about it. But um, sometimes I just think like, 
how the hell did I end up there? Um, but it was good for me. Like it was, it was good to um, my my mum lived in Perth for um, a fair bit of her childhood, so a lot of her brothers and sisters kind of stayed there. And um, yeah, it was good to just have them and, and spend a, a good year, two years with with that side of the family as well. Um, so for me personally, outside of footy, it was it did a lot. Yeah, it's always good to meet new people as well. Um, yeah. We wouldn't be here today if I didn't. If we, you know, you didn't, and I weren't there. So. That's the best part about it, the relationships. Uh, where were you living when you were in Perth and what were your fondest memories in Perth? Um, I actually lived with Shep for a, a fair chunk of that and that was right on Cottesloe, about a minute from the water. So um, I was I was living it up a bit. Yeah, I was, I was, better. I was taking a piss, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go to Perth and live, you've got to get around Cot or the beach because oh, there's mate, no point mucking yeah. around. Yeah. It's all one. Um, Perth's pumping. I was there last year. They've they've really, you know, got it going, I think, because COVID hasn't hit them, hit them yeah, until yeah, now. Sure, yeah, sure, um, even Fremantle, it looked it completely changed since I'd been there last. Like yep. they've just been, I guess, renovations everywhere, new bars. Like yeah, right. it, it's yeah. pretty cool. Um, definitely recommend anyone out there that hasn't been get there, especially Cottesloe Hotel for a, for a few Sunday beers. Oh yeah, yeah, I miss that actually. I miss the Sundays. Sundays were good over there. Yeah, yeah. Sunday sessions. There's nothing like it. And then after Perth, where'd you go? That's uh, Adelaide. Straight back here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So straight back to Adelaide and. Um, Went to North Adelaide, so I played juniors at North Adelaide. So I came back, returned back to North Adelaide, and um, I think I spent probably another five or six years there, and finished my career at Glenelg. Yeah, Glenelg. We uh, we just had a, a laugh about a few guys I'm mates with, you're mates with, big Liam McBean and uh, Darcy Bailey, just two of the greatest humans alive. Yep. Any stories on them too? <laughs> oh, too many. Um, <laughs> Das, yeah. Um, shout out to the the Glenelg Bailey. Um, <laughs> he's one of the funniest men um, on the planet um, for oh, me. Right. Like he's up there with, yeah, in in my top five. But yeah, we um, I'd, I'd sit next to him. So I was number eight. He was number nine. So every day at training, like we'd just be sitting in there, and um, it'd just be a talking absolute garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just try to get so a laugh funny, out of, try to get a laugh out of absolutely anything <laughs> he actually you can he can dance as well can't he yeah yeah he'd be an mj uh, fan as well i reckon yeah he's, he's got a he's got some secret traits like dancing um he's, he's spit a few bars for me um a couple of times so <laughs> yeah. if you ever run into glenelg bailey people like ask him to spit some spit some bars i reckon he uh he'd go all right well, let's get back to the the music so when does it start getting really serious for you? You obviously got, you know, it doesn't take, I wouldn't have thought it's hard for someone that's scouting talent to listen to your voice and, and see you behind a guitar. At what point did someone um, reach out to you? Was there a pivotal moment? Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, yeah, I think, you know, footy again, like I was playing at Glenelg and um, uh, Rulla, who uh, is another MC or another artist from, from Adelaide, he was playing at Glenelg as well so um i'd seen him put up a few things about playing the guitar and i knew he was interested and so we'd kind of you know been that awkward thing like oh you play the guitar oh yeah sweet me too and then just like leave it for a couple months <laughs> and then we ended up um linking up and um just going around his house and playing guitar and um and he said yeah he'd he'd uh he'd had a song called black swan that he'd been working on um that he'd wrote after seeing uh, uncle archie roach perform i think it was down in tassie maybe and um yeah he asked me if i wanted to you know write a verse and um you know figure out a chorus for it and um yeah we sat around one afternoon before training and worked on black swan and um yeah recorded it and kind of we just wanted to record and see how it would sound and look and um i went off to training and then the next night he's like yeah i'm gonna put this out at six and i'm like no you're not <laughs> Straight like, out. hang on <laughs> yeah um and then yeah it, it probably got to about five five fifty five, and he's like, "Bro, so I got to put it out." Like I've told it, I've done the teaser. I was like, "You can't!" Like I'm not ready. Just wait. Just leave it. Let's do it properly. And then got to about two minutes before, I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, just put it out." <laughs> and then from there, yeah, we got some. We got we got a bit of traction, and um, yeah, landed a gig from there. And um, the the directors of WOMAD were at that gig um, that we played at, so they they approached us. Um, we entered into a WOMAD. Um, the Wom Adelaide Academy for Artists, and from there we ended up landing the main stage at Wom Adelaide, um, which is one of the biggest biggest festivals in in Australia um, through COVID as well, which was very interesting. So, and then from there, yeah, like as um, I said earlier, offline, like from there, the gigs from that kind of just kept 
growing and um, leading to you know other opportunities um, in the industry. And um, I think that was probably our our second live gig together doing WOMAD. And then I think the third or fourth, we ended up at Base in the Grass back home in Darwin in front of, I think, 15, 16,000. That's so cool. Yeah. And then AFL halftime. And That's epic. Just just what's WOMAD for everyone listening? Yeah, WOMAD Adelaide Festival, yeah. So it's um, it's essentially a, a festival made up of um, artists and, um, from across the world. So usually it's a global event. They grab, um, you know, artists from, um, you know, multicultural backgrounds and, um, you know, world art and bring them to, bring them into Adelaide and they hold it in uh, the Adelaide Botanical Gardens there. That's so cool, man. Yeah. So he's he's dropped it. You're like, hold back. And to be honest, it was the right move in the end. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it just needed a little bit of a push. Um, and then I think I'd, you know, I'd just turn my phone off and just left it. Um, woke up the next morning and, yeah, there was, you know, all the little red notifications were up and I was like, no, I can't handle this. I'd, <laughs> I just can't, can't do it. It's, it's, mate, it's a cool song. I've been pumping it. Um, Black Swan, you just had it online to Spotify under, under Marlin. Under Marlin, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, you that. can find all our songs under either Marlin, Rulla. Um, we did that one with a producer, um, Jim Blah, who's um, yeah, got a label, Black Empire. Um, so he's a, he's a great producer. And, um, yeah, we did that one with him, and um, I ended up doing a couple more with him after that. And yeah. Dumb it down for me, just the, just the process of a song, right? So, Singer songwriter. So say you write the song and then sing it. Yep. And then you got a producer. And then yep. there's I get confused with all the record labels and all these deals and the managers. How does it all like who's involved in an album or a song? Have you got some music coming out soon as well? Uh, yeah, we've got some new stuff coming out. Yeah. Cool. So um I guess it'll come from a song that say essentially I write a song. Um I'll go and sit find a producer, um, and then we sit and make that kind of into a track. Um and then you put all your kind of bells and whistles. I like to write um, just simply off of either a bass guitar or um, a simple bass line or just with my acoustic. Um, and then the producer will add in, you know, drums or you might work with a, a, a couple of, um, he might have a couple of mates that specialize in drums or vocals. So they'll come in and work your vocal lines or, or whatever. And um, yeah, once you're happy with the track and where it's sitting, um, once you got whatever you need in it, um, you then get get it mixed and mastered, and then once it's mixed and mastered, then um, you can either, if you're with a label, your label will then distribute that out, um, or if you're independent um, like us at the moment, you'd probably just use who you know um, within the industry to help. So in, in terms of Black Swan, um, you know, we collaborated with uh, Jim Blow and Black Empire, um, and we got the, the fam and Elephant tracks to help us distribute that out and um, and release that as well. So. And, and then you go into your marketing and all your, your, your assets and, and, and promoting that as well. Yeah, well, wow, so there's a heap of work that goes into it. Yeah, like it's – that's the one thing, that, the trickiest thing that I've found is that um, it's a bit of a waiting game as well. Um, you want to time the release right. Um, you want to make sure that you've got all your assets in place and all your ducks in a row. Um, if you're doing a, a video clip with it um, to make it as punchy as possible on the release um, and then you don't want to release it when someone else – in the same, in the same, you know, um, category as you or, um, similar to you is releasing something as well. And, um, you know, lose a bit of traction that way as well. And then you got your PR guys who will go to radio stations and, you know, for example, triple J they'll go and, um, see if they can get airtime on triple J. So. Oh, it's all about timing, isn't it? It is. It's crazy. Yeah. So you might have a finished product in June and you might not release it till, you know, December. Oh, you'd be itching like just you would want to release it so bad. Yeah, I think with 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 Black Swan, that 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 was the hard one for us. A bit of a learning curve. We were kind of like, let's we've got to get this out. We've got to get it out, and then you just got to let let the people who know what they're doing do what they do because they'll do it. They'll do it right. It's almost like you're working like every other business six twelve months in advance. So you kind of you know you've nailed a song and then onto the next one, onto the next one. You yeah. almost got to go to your gig and go back into your files and sing those songs that you're not thinking about. Almost. Yeah, that's right. And the the interesting thing, which is probably you'll like, like you could have a produced track, but then the way you perform that might be a little bit different. So, for instance, uh, Black Swan, right? It, the produced track is a lot different to what we perform live, so you can't. It's it's not it's not just flicking into from the produced track that we released and flicking into performance mode and just playing that. Um, and even if you 
before before a gig, like I won't listen to our produced stuff before I play because there's different lines and different runs that I I would I would do perform on the track that I won't do live. So it just cloud clouds my mind a little bit when I'm in performance mode. So I try and stay away from listening to our stuff. Yeah. Do they do the, do the listeners find that like is it when you rock up and do it live, they love the you know the versatility of it, or they want the exact same thing as the track. Yeah, I think everyone's probably a little different. Like um, we've had feedback, like yeah, that's it's a little bit different to the track, um, and it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but yeah, people people sometimes like the versatility, um, but then sometimes you know people just want they just want what they love. Um, so you got to try and find the balance. It's not, and for us, it's not a hell of a lot different, but there's different subtleties in, in it um which i think are cool though yeah they yeah. are well we're gonna have you singing later on uh we'll let you warm up the vocals later on so i can't wait but, but while we're talking about the um you as an artist and your journey so far i want to know a little bit about your first gig and the uh, anticipation going into it like the nerves to, can you describe that day for me yeah I, okay, I can remember it was at um it was at uh it was actually in Sydney, yeah. So there was there was an open mic night. Um, I was there for a work. Um, it was like a staff event. Yeah, right. But we had probably 150 staff from across Australia come to this staff event, um, plus all the partners. So it was about three or 400 people in this joint. Um, and there was an open mic night, and one of my mates put my, um, put my name down. And then they called it out, and I was like, far out. <laughs> <laughs> but I had an inkling that, they might've been doing that. And deep down, I, I wanted to get up and sing. Like I wanted to just start. Um, and then, so, you know, the 24 hours, I was just thinking about, I was supposed to be there working, but I was just thinking about how am I going to start this thing? How am I going to finish it? Um, and then I just got up and um, I got up and played and um, it was, yeah, it was crazy, like hard for me to get from start to finish. Cause I was just thinking about just don't fuck up, don't fuck up. And then, when I got to the finish and then everyone, I, I got the reaction from the crowd and then I sat down and then my mates and everyone's like, who the, who the fuck are you? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of validation for me to keep going. And um, that kind of gave me a sense that I should probably start pursuing this properly and start putting in some, some work. That's so cool. So you obviously got an overwhelming response and everyone loved it. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And then you go on to your probably second gig where you're probably playing in front of, you know, 10 people in Adelaide. Um, and then that probably was harder to do because there was less people in the room. Um, so you get different kind of looks and experiences from each gig, but um, the, the best thing is what you take away from it. You learn so much about yourself, about what you need to iron out, about your set, your performance. And um, yeah, and then you've just kept saying yes to a lot of things and to the point now where... Um, you know, we've got a lot of opportunities coming our way, so you kind of got to start to, you know, just pick, you know, what's what's best for what's best for you, what's the best fit. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, how many gigs do you reckon you've done so far? Um, oh, geez, I think, yeah, I don't know. Probably last year, I think we did about twelve. I think probably works out once a month, nearly twice a month. Um, and then, yeah, this year we've probably done five already. Um, we've got. Um, we're doing AFL Indigenous round um, coming up at, at Marvel Stadium. and um, So we're doing that and then, yeah, the tour, which is just a beast in itself that, yeah, trying to get our head around. Let's talk about the tour. Who are you on tour with? Uh, Xavier Rudd. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah, so we, we're opening for Xavier Rudd um, across, I think it's about 36, 37 shows across nationally, nationally across Australia, myself and Rulla. Um, and... Yeah, it's kind of every major major city and um, major major theatre. So that that is so big. Yeah, it's it's huge. Like it's like when you look at it, like it at what it is, it's huge. But f for me, like um, in terms of opportunity, it's the probably the biggest one. Or it is the biggest one we've had. Yeah, that's so cool. So you're you're going to be touring Australia. So for everyone listening and watching that want to come out and support, including myself, where will you be? Like when does this tour start? And you're obviously going around every state in Australia. Yeah. So the tour starts uh, the 25th of May, I think, in Toowoomba. Um, then we make our way through to uh, Gold Coast, Brisbane, and then we 
head down to New South Wales. So from the 25th of May through to I think the 28th of July, um, we're on the road. That's a tour. Yeah. Yeah. And are you like in terms of preparation for your vocals, because you're going to be singing flat out. Yeah. There's a heap of pre-season work that goes into this or you, you kind of, I'm sure you're singing it, you know, in the studio all the time anyway, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I think. It's just a good point. Like the, the pre-season has been probably gigging and, um, you know, doing regular sessions with my vocal coach. So, um, and, you know, knowing that we're going on tour, she's she's prepped me for exercises and things to do and um, things to stay away from as well. Um, you know, the tour, tour life, you can probably fall into the trap of, um, or just gigging life, fall into the trap of, um, you know, drinking your rider dry in the green room before, before a performance and after. So... Um, you know, on tour, I can't be, can't be having too many beers or drinking too much alcohol and, um, got to stay away from, you know, fatty, fatty and oily foods and spicy foods and stuff like that. So that's so cool. So that's what they're saying. So just for, so that's great insight. So you, you, you shouldn't drink alcohol at all. If you're being really professional, is it all good to have a couple of beers? Um, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's based on, based on how you work. I think it's all, all down to, um, you know, what's, what's best fit for yourself, but, um, I know that it, it, it dries out my vocal cords um, and it just makes it a little bit harder to, or I, I gotta, I gotta, my output of effort is um, a little bit more than when I'm not. And then the other thing is like, you like to just enjoy the moment for what it is without having any um, alcohol in, 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 your, in your system as well. You know, sometimes walking onto a stage and, um, but it's very easy to, to just sit there and eat the pizzas in the, in the green room and, um, have three beers. Um, and that turns into 10 and then you go on stage, you know, so you yeah. gotta be smart. Yeah. So what is your perfect preparation for a gig? Um, perfect prep. Oh, a lot of water. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, you, I'll, I'll start drinking water and hydrating probably 24 hours, 48 hours before. Um, and that was just a footy thing, um, that just stuck around, but then, yeah, the, my vocal coach was like, "Yeah, that's super important." So, um, you got to stay hydrated as well, and um, yeah, just making sure like you can you can tend to um, worry about not being super ready. Um, so, for me, if there's a if for the week, if we're performing on a Friday, I'd like to get our rehearsals done by probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm not. So I've got probably Wednesday, Thursday as a rest day, um, and then I'm just doing light vocal exercises and just prepping and warming up. And then um, on Friday, there's not too much fatigue um, in terms of vocally and, um, you know, I'm ready to go. That's so cool. And what about exercise to get the body moving? Do you still, you're in good shape still, so you're doing a bit of work? Yeah, I think that's the important one. I, I find, um, you know, when I'm exercising regularly, it's um, it's a lot better. Um, it's, it's easier to activate, you know, my diaphragm and my body and, um, yeah, so I, I try to you know keep keep running regularly. It's harder when you don't have a coach forcing you, though. Oh. Um, I found that I found that really hard. But yeah, I, sometimes I'll go for a run the, the day of or um, a few hours before a gig, um, and just to just to get up and ready, and um, not too not too much, not not anything strenuous, but just to activate a little bit. We were saying this earlier. That you feel so good after going for a run, don't you? I don't know mentally anyway. Not flogging yourself, but. Just, you know, running around the Albert Park Lake out here, just a couple of laps or one, doesn't matter, just a little sweat. It's amazing how you start thinking and um, the energy that you start to get just naturally. It's it's yeah. it's how I get going, I feel, and I'm sure that someone like yourself would be a great way to, you know, switch off as well because you're, you're blowing a gasket. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing is, yeah, that's a good point. Like I'd, I like to run to s just switch off as well. Like um, I, f I feel like I've got to a point where there's so much happening and you can't relax sometimes. So going for a run and just zoning in, um, even swimming, you know, swim 20 laps. And, um, you know, if you're swimming in the morning, I find I can plan the whole day out while I'm swimming laps. And um, it just takes your mind away from drifting and trying to worry about everything all at once. So, yeah, it's mentally, it's it's super. I was going to say mentally, everyone had a bit of anxiety in their time. And it's generally when there's something big they can see around the corner and, um, are you doing a fair bit of mental prep, you know, like you, have you got a psychologist that you speak to just so you can, just, you know, get the best out of yourself, I guess, going into these huge gigs? Is there, is there still a bit of that going on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. So I found probably, uh, last year, um, 
early last year, I was getting, I felt like I was getting weighed down from a lot of the music stuff. I was still playing football at the time as well, um, obviously working. Um, and, you know, we're obviously in business as well with um, myself and Daniel, uh, cousin Daniel. So I just found that I was getting weighed down, but I didn't actually know what was happening. Um, and I just felt like the right thing to do was just to seek advice. So, um, you know, I've been seeing, a, um, I guess, a psychologist for probably 18 months now and um, we meet regularly and it's really, really about, um, you know, how I'm distributing my energy and my resource in amongst all, um, all my, you know, commitments in life. And um, what I found was I was, I was distributing my resource into areas that probably didn't really matter. It was all about the what ifs. So um, I've realigned and, re and focused on, on stuff that I really can control and, and worry about. So that's been super for me. And um, in all, I just got, I've got a lot, a lot more energy to put into you know my family um, and, and people around me rather than putting it into you know the what ifs and worrying about the anxieties of of a show or or prepping um, or things that probably actually don't really exist. The control, the controllables, is the old footy the term, old footy isn't it? Term, yeah. It's funny how it's uh, it's all it all kind of links, and it's great. And how long? Because this is great um, that you share this. Appreciate it because everyone out there, you know. There's a bit of a stigma out there. It's it's getting way better, mind you. But the whole psychologist thing, people think, oh, what's going on? Sometimes you got to think of it as a mental tune-up. You know, like an F1 goes to the pits, you know, and changes the wheels. It, it's a bit like that. Do you see your psychologist on the reg? If you book in every month or every two weeks, what's your what's your perfect plan? Yeah, um, I think that was that was the key for me. I didn't I didn't feel like I was um, like I was struggling in any way, um, but I felt like I I just needed. I needed some help in um, just making sure I was getting the best out of myself midweek. Um, I felt like I was just running around like a, um, you know, a, a chicken with its head cut off, you know, like I, I was just doing all this stuff and um, there was no real structure. And coming from a football world where I had, I had super structure, I was going to training, I was going to work, um, I'd come home, I'd cook tea, I'd sit on the couch, I'd just relax and re-energize and then once the, this footy stuff came into play uh the music stuff sorry structure went out the window and i was just jumping around and saying yes to everything and um it, for me I, I wasn't mentally feeling down but i just felt like i needed um needed some assistance in making sure that um i didn't get to that spot so i i wanted to stay ahead of the game for me and and that's essentially why why i went and did it um and now I just see I, I see her regularly, um, just to make sure, just to check in and make sure that we're doing. I'm I'm, I'm still practicing the things that um, we've put in place. Yeah, it's good, good accountability, I guess, isn't it? And consistency. So you, yeah, great, great, great sharing and some of that knowledge there, mate. You know, just the consistency, like you said, and um, getting the best out of yourself is probably the key key theme there. Righto. So back to music, Xavier Rudd. You know, you. The undercard, you know, what do you call it? Before you, the, you, the undercard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you call it in the um, music industry? Uh, support act. Support act. Yeah. So you, literally you're playing and then out comes the big fella. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, and, you know, we've, at, at Wyoming Adelaide, we opened for Midnight Oil and Vicar and Linda. Like that, that was huge for us. Like um, I still, I, f I forget about that. But when I like to remind myself and, and, and people around me that, yeah, I, we opened for, for midnight all myself and Rulla, so and essentially, we're, yeah, it's the same thing. You know, we, we're the support act. We were the first act of the, or the, the second last act of the night. Sorry, um, and then uh, Xavier rolls out with you know his drum kits and um, his didgeridoos and his guitars and his, and just wows the crowd. And he's got a huge following as well, which is what I'm so excited for. Like, um, you go on YouTube and you just suss him out, suss his shows out, and people just. Yeah, love him. He's got a huge following. Have you met him? And how does it come? All, how does it come about that you guys tour with him? Um, I haven't met him in person yet. I've spoken to him online. Um, the funny thing is, like Rulla, Rulla actually danced with him back in the day when Rulla was very young. Um, and Rulla's family and 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 Zave have kept in touch all this way. And um, I think Rulla's yeah, he's, he's probably watched Rulla from afar get in, get very invested into his music and. Um, yeah, he's just kind of supported Ruller along the way and um, and guided him through 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 some stuff and yeah, just reached out with an opportunity and we were like far out. Yep, 
for sure. That's so yeah. cool. What a man. Yeah, yeah. He's that's that's what I take away. He's just very caring from from, from what I know. Yeah, there'd be nothing. Yeah, that's great. That's that's what you want to hear, and um, that's what it's all about, really. When the uh, when the guitar's down, before you do sing, um, and we can check you out online and everyone can support you. We just spoke about it earlier. I just want to remind everyone, head on, look, can you just tell everyone where they can s follow you and your journey um, thus far so that we can, you know, get everyone behind you? Yeah, um, probably the best spot is uh, on our socials, Instagram, Marlon Music Official or Marlon Ruller, um, Marlon X Ruller. And um, yeah, the, the tour dates will be on there. Um, Xavier Rudd's, um, you know, Instagram handle and, and his, and his social platforms will have all the tour dates as well. Um, we're in every capital city, um, across, you know, from, from May 25th through to July 28th. Um, and a couple of regional, um, spots around, around those dates as well. So, and I think they've added a couple of uh, festivals in, in amongst that as well. There's, there's one in New South Wales, um, with Amy Shark and, and Xavier Rudd, so we'll be playing at that one. So that's so good. There yeah. you go, everyone. Make sure you're following and check out that. Check it out, I should say. Who's the coolest person you've met in the green room or in the music industry thus far? There'd be a few. I've heard a few big dogs just drop the midnight oils is pretty big. Yeah, midnight oils are huge. Um oh, bass in the grass was 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 pretty cool. Um yeah, we had there was jungle giants up there, you know, Peking Duck crew are, they're super cool. They're lads. Um, yeah, met them briefly and um you know, chilling it was just yeah, he you know, I ran into him a couple of times and he he was amazing. But you know, people like Uncle Archie Roach, like he is he's monumental in Australian music and um a big part of, you know, my music, uh, what I would listen to growing up. So to be able to perform with him and um just recently did um did something with with hilltop hoods as well you know that was pretty cool that is um, sick yeah so uh yeah it, it's it's it just continues to grow as well and yeah you know, people like um you know in the australian hip-hop scene like um earth boy as well from from elephant tracks you know people like that are just you know of them but then you meet them and they're just they're just like me and you like they're just they're just people um and you just you're just amazed by how um, down to earth and how friendly and caring they are and, and supportive of you as well and um, you know we've met Briggs and um, Trials from AB Original and you know you know Trials is probably one of the most you know supportive supportive people that I've met in in not just the music industry just in life in general you know so yeah that's cool man that's good to hear that everyone's like that that's what you want to hear everyone's uh, on the same journey before we yeah as I said we're going to get you to. Um, get behind the guitar there's a funny story with the guitar i must <laughs> yeah. i must give out a huge shout out to uh jackie crisp last night i messaged you and i said mate are we all good for tomorrow as we were um and you said no of i need a guitar of um my guitar has been lost an airline has lost it and left it at adelaide because you said adelaide at the moment is just a shambles so i put a little note on instagram and said who's got a guitar and crispy's put his hand up and said, I've got one. Can you talk to me about what happened last night? Because this is a funny story. Yeah, well, you know, I'd, I was very careful. I didn't want to push the envelope and go, mate, I need this guitar. Send me send me the location. But um, it got to the point where I was getting real tired and I was like, if this gets any later, I'm not, I'm not getting this thing tonight. Um, so we exchanged numbers and um, he was great. Like he's, he's come through with the goods. But he sent me the address and I'm, I'm standing, it was pouring rain too. So I'm, I'm, I'm standing outside, um, I'm standing outside this address and I've said, yeah, I'm here, brother. And I'm just waiting. Um, rain's trickling down. He's like, oh shit, wait, that's the wrong address. So he sent me like four streets away. So I had to, <laughs> had to run, around, <laughs> run around the corner. Yeah, but no, he's come through with the goods. I can't, I can't rat him out too much. He's, he's a legend. Yeah. Oh, he's a good man. We thank you so much because now we can all listen to the to you play music um, in a short period. But um, yeah, what a great man. And uh, yeah, hopefully you get your guitar back. Is it? So it's just left in Adelaide? Or not yeah, it's just sitting there, yeah. Oh, what yeah. a stitch up. Nah, that's right. Does that happen on gigs? Like that must be a... Especially, if, 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 I mean, so I'm sure Xavier Rudd, you know, you're up there and you're on tour, so I doubt it would happen. But these littler gigs, you know, when you're just floating in and out of states, like that'd be the, I don't know about you, but I'll be going yeah. getting anxiety attacks thinking about it. Yeah, I think, um, well, that's the, the luxury of having, you know, a good people putting on um, putting on the, your gigs and your shows. You know, you just, you call them up and say, look, I've, we've run out of this, we've run out of that, so they can help you. And good thing is there's a music shop everywhere. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, you're never too far from what you need, I guess. But in terms of the guitar, right? So, Crispy's come through with the goods. I want you to be ruthless on the guitar. I've got no idea about these guitars, but you said, I need an acoustic guitar. And I, and I said, all right, I can find you one. What's this guitar like looking at it? Is this out of 10? What it's, have we got here? Ah, look, it does a job. It's got a nice sound. Um, it's got a pickup in it, which is good. Um, you want to be able to plug in and um, if you need to. So, look, I, 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 won't, I won't rat him out too much, but. Um, so we, of, we've done well here. We've done well, yeah, with what we've got. That's great. We can only work with what we've got, um, and, and we're gonna we're gonna listen to that. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you've got because you've got the best voice in the world. Oh, man, I, 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 I as I said to you, when I listened to your voice, I was like, mate, you are a star. And then obviously we started chatting, and you said, yeah, I'm actually going on tour soon. It's um, it's it's crazy to think that you know you can you've obviously just started this journey. Where's the I mean, you shouldn't say what's the end goal because you should leave that open. But where you at me- mentally with your with, with your goals? Where do you want to get out of this? Um, yeah, I'd, well, another thing I learned from footy is to write them down. So I'm I'm really um, I'm really specific with what I my intentions in, in terms of what I want to do. Um, you know, we've got some some tracks that we're I'm releasing um, some collaboration tracks as well. So I want to get them out and then. Um, you know, in the background, I've got my own solo piece that I want to work on. But um, at the minute, you know, myself and Rulla, we've, we're, we're about to tour. We're writing some um, some content and some really cool songs. We're, we're going to release those. Um, and, yeah, I, I just want to travel the world and, and get my sound and, um, you know, share my music with as many people as I can and as far as I can as well. You know, I think I had two dreams as a kid and one was to play AFL footy. The other one, the other one was to be a musician and travel the world and sing. So, um, I've been very fortunate. I've had you know good guidance around me and great support. Um, so I think you know I'm still, I'm, I feel like I'm on the right track in terms of starting that that second dream. Um, and then yeah, just got to you know keep working, keep working hard. Oh, you'll get there, mate. We're right behind you. Well, I don't want to hold you up any longer. I'm really keen to to hear you bang out a few songs and. Um, and obviously just play a few few covers and classics or whatever you want to play, to be honest. I'd love to hear what you've got. When you when you do play, when someone does say, play me a song, what is your go-to track? Um, I've got a, trap co- a track called Trippin', but, um, you know, people love Black Swan, so you, you probably just probably just belt out Black Swan a couple of times for people and then um, go to what you know. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Well, um, we'll let you warm the vocals up and uh, we're going to get into it, so... A first here on Tommy Talks and the Oz American Aces platform. We're going to have someone play live. Um, really excited, mate, and uh, looking forward to I need the popcorn braid. I'm going to sit back and just enjoy this with you, mate. So, uh, but before we do get in the music, I've got two segments. Um, one of them is our friends at Caps. They're a huge um, supporter of ours, and a big shout out to Caps. This one's for you, mate. Uh, are Beautiful. you into your American sport? Uh, you know what? I, I I wasn't, but then I was into podcasts and. I started watching and listening to the Pivot podcast. Um, yes. Yeah, with Freddie T, Shannon Crowder, and uh, Ryan Clark. So, They're the best. And now I'm into NFL. So um, I'm really, I'm really invested. Shout out to Pivot, Pivot podcast. But um, I love that. I watched that. I watched those episodes like twice over. I, I had, when I initially started this, I was watching I Am Athlete, and I don't know what's happened there. There must be some dramas because yeah. those boys are on that platform, and then now they've started their own. I'm guess okay. I'm only putting. Uh, you should never assume in the world, but I feel like something went wrong there. So they've gone. We'll go start our own. I saw them on the uh, with Charles Barkley the other day. I watched that one, and mate, they're doing great things. So they're, yeah, big shout out to them because we love their work. Uh, the NFL, I'm a big NFL man as well. You, have you got a team or are you just keen to support whoever? Um, I've, I've, I've always wanted to follow American footy and, and the NFL. Um, and last year I said, I'm going to pick a side. And I think the, the Chiefs were playing uh, Baltimore Ravens. And I said, whoever wins this, uh, I'm going to go for. And I think Baltimore won. And now I'll go for Baltimore. Man, I'm a Ravens man as uh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I love yeah. Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah. I just watched the highlights now. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a casual. Like, I'm just starting. But, like, Lamar Jackson, man, he's just so exciting. Yeah. They, uh, they got rid of Hollywood Brown. Well, he left. But I'd imagine they're going to run the ball a lot next year, But which means Lamar just does some freaky things. And, yeah. Yeah, they're exciting. I love the way he goes about it. There's actually a lot of quarterbacks that do what he does now, you know, run the ball. But um, that's funny you said that because I'm on the Ravens bandwagon as well. Yeah, right. Um, 
been a couple of frustrating finals appearances from them boys, but yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I love NFL and I guess Cats White Caps are a great sponsor of this show that we uh, we appreciate them. So, mate, anyone anyone out there that wants some NFL uh, merch or NBA, uh, Boston have just got the job done against Milwaukee, which is quite exciting. So, Boston will advance. Uh, head online and uh, use the discount code CAPS uh, for a bit of discount there. But, um, mate, we've got a segment. So, this segment's called Your Caps Moment. It's the greatest moment in your career. So let's let's call it footy or music. Um, what has been your caps moment thus far in your life when it comes to your career? Um, yeah, it's it's a hard one. Um, I think it, I just go back to you know my dreams as a kid. You know, playing my first AFL game. Um, I got to share that with my older cousin Daniel, who's um, been a great role model for me in a you know most of my life and. Um, so in terms of footy, yeah, playing AFL, playing your first game, kicking your first goal um, on MCG as well, that was cool. And then in terms of music, I, I think you know, there's been so many um, so many awesome moments, but I think we spe- shared a real special moment with Archie Roach um, where we played played Black Swan to him in a private um, session before Womad, so that was pretty cool. I watched that. That was cool. Um, as, you know, live as well. It's pretty special yeah yeah that was amazing and i had my mother in the room as well so that was even better yeah is that the first time you'd played that um probably the fourth yeah so it was fresh wasn't it real fresh yeah yeah that's epic oh there you go the caps moments we love that question because everyone's got a a, a special moment in their life it's a bit of a pivotal moment and uh we uh we love you sharing it and the other one is uh the rixies mate we've got a rixon and retirement question uh this is where you when you when you do travel the world and you dominate and you you know you headline all these acts, you you, you get your ricks on. You you're, you're going to retire really in the that. world. Where's the one place in the world that you'd uh, you'd love to retire? Back home in Darwin. I want to retire in Darwin with a big property, um, plenty of kids and my nice dog Sunny and, and and my partner just just chill back and relax, go fishing. I love that. Yeah. You know what? I've got, I've got a funny story. I, I've never had a pair of Ricks. I've always wanted them. And you know Mark Stone from the old Frio, yeah, old Stoney, Frio days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Stoney always used to go, he goes, get the Ricks on. <laughs> they Ricks. I'm like, I can't afford them. They're too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stoney, he's at Brizzy now, isn't he? He's, he's at Brizzy, coach. yeah. Great man. Oh, that's, that's great. Oh, well, big shout out to Stoney. Nah, pleasure, mate. Appreciate so when you're, when you're playing your gigs, feel free to throw them on. And if the... Uh, Rather and the boys. Anyone else needs a pair, hit me up. Righto. Well, this is my favourite. Uh, I'm very excited about this. This is where I can shut up and let you just do your work, mate. Hey, guys. Marlon here. Uh, and this is mine and Rulla's track, uh, Black Swan. Shout out to Rulla Roll down, back down in Adelaide. <laughs> I got chills up and down my spine Won't leave me alone, my man Cause I got thrills up and down my life It won't leave me alone, my baby Because they're taking all of our money As we're walking out the door And they're leaving all of their loving And she's telling him to let go you can see it in the writing as we read it on your wall. She's a devil in disguise. And I'm a, a part to a lost part to a love cause. And black swan, black swan, stand up tall when you're singing, cause you're singing for me, my man. My man, my man, na 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 na. Black swan, black swan, stand up tall when you're singing, cause you're singing for me, my man. My man, my man, na 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 na, baby. Singing to me, my baby. Singing to me, my baby. Singing to me, my baby. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode. If you enjoy listening to our podcast, please feel free to hit us up on our social channels at Oz American Aces. If you're entertained, inspired, or feel more educated, please share it with your friends and family because we appreciate the support. Righto, catch you on the next one.